And welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers are the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. There's no crackers in the store on the shelves. No problem. These grocery stores ain't got nothing on us home cooks, that's for sure. So stick around because here at Whirlpool Holler Kitchen, we're going to show you how to make some of the best soda crackers. We're going to be using two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Now I'm going to do a One and a half teaspoons of baking soda. You're going to need a half a teaspoon of salt, you're going to need three tablespoons of unsalted butter. My butter is cold out of the freezer and I'm just grating it on my grater. It makes it easier to blend in with your flour. I'm just going to work it in with my hands. It doesn't take long. You can use a blending fork, pastry, blender, or pastry cutter, whatever they call them. Me and Mr. Brown are discussing a few things. He needs to go out. He's wanting to go out and do a few things. He's got cabin fever. It snowed yesterday. It's really cold outside right now, but the sun's shining. I've got one cup of sweet milk, and what I call sweet milk is just regular whole milk. And I'm just blending it with my hands. And I pour just a little at a time till I get it all to come together. Sometimes it takes all of it, and sometimes it don't. It's a sticky no, dough. It goes from one extreme to the next, that's for sure. I'm going to add just a little, probably a tablespoon, or two of extra flour to that very sticky tacky dough 
Not too much. You don't want too much extra flour. Just till it comes together and your dough is really soft. You don't want to work it too much. So there's our dough. It's really soft. And it feels good. I'm going to take my dough, some plastic wrap. I'm going to wrap it up, put it in the refrigerator, and let it chill for about an hour before we roll it out. It's been an, a good hour. I'm going to put some flour on my parchment paper. Get my big rolling pin. It's a good heavy one. I'm gonna take my dough, put just a little bit of flour on it, and I wanna knead it not even for a minute, just a couple times over, because we don't want our dough to be tough. Kind of like if you're making a pie crust. Just don't overwork it. I'm gonna cut my dough in half, because it's easier to work with that way. I'm gonna cover the other half back up and put it back in the refrigerator to keep it chilled. Boy, I got some wild hair today, don't I? I've been busy this morning, that's for sure. I'm going to roll this out. It's, a, it, it, it's easy to roll out. It's very forgiving dough. And you want to get it rolled out very, very, very thin. About an eighth of an inch. I love working with dough, just like I love making bread. Very therapeutic, good for the soul. Now if you got one of those tabletop pasta rollers, or even one that's on your attachment for your KitchenAid, you can roll this dough through there and it'll get it so paper thin and that's really what you want.
if you'll take that dough and roll it over your your rolling pin and then just come back with it and then roll back it helps to thin that that dough out I do this when I'm making homemade pasta you see um, see how the end of this see how thin that is now getting the middle that thin is always the question You need to get as much of that flour off as you can and turn it over and dust that flour off. Now I'm going to use one of these. This come with a kit that I bought, um, a ravioli kit, making homemade raviolis, and uh, it just had all kinds of little gadgets in there. I'm going to use this to cut my crackers out. You don't have to use one of these. Use a pizza cutter, use a knife, whatever you want to use, whatever works. So now that we got it to our, as thin as we want it. I'll tell you, I've got a mess of flour over here <laughs> on the other side of the floor. And I do want my uniform, I think. You can cut them as big or as little as you want. I'm going to make me a square, and then I'll come back. And I will reuse this. I'm not going to do away with that. I'll come back and reuse it. Now, if I was in a hurry, just going to make some crackers, I wouldn't go to all this trouble, but for y'all, I'm going to. <laughs> so. So, how big do I want my crackers? And I'm not very good at going in a straight line. You can have narrow soda crackers. You could even cut some out in just little circles. But if you're in a hurry just to whip some crackers out, just get your dough and get it rolled out and just cut away. Don't worry if it's uniform or not. That's how I would do many years ago when the kids were at home. And I talked about that. And uh, I would just go in there and just whip them out, cut them with a, just a regular. Y'all tell you, I don't never cut very straight line. Um, I just cut them with a knife, throw them on a cookie sheet, and away we'd go. So we got them cut out. Now a lot of recipes, and a lot of people like to go ahead and brush them out with a little bit of olive oil, or a little bit of butter on top. I find out that in my case, that my crackers didn't come out as crispy when I done that. But it may be di totally different when y'all make them. That's just my experience. Now I'm gonna take me a fork, and I'm gonna cut me, cut me. I'm gonna poke some little holes, and it don't really matter. You just don't want your crackers to puff up too much. Mine always sometimes will puff up a little bit. Not much, but you know when you buy your crackers at the store,
go ahead and we're going to take our crackers and I don't want them touching while they're baking. Now you may have to use two cookie sheets. I've got a what they call a, a half a sheet pan, commercial sheet pan that I'm using. We use these kinds in the cafeteria at school. This would be a half a sheet pan. Our bigger sheet pans, of course, are double. Now, a lot of people say when they're cooking their crackers, these ones on the outside want to get burnt before the others. And what you can do for that, our oven is at 375. You can see none of my, my crackers are not the same size. Uh, what you can do for that is take you some strips of foil and run them down the edge of your crackers on the side. Miss Laura, don't make no mess. Uh -uh. Okay, look y'all, these are, I'm going to tell y'all, I told y'all 15 minutes, and my oven, this is at 10 minutes, and it, they got a little bit browner than I really intended them to, but uh, they'll be okay. So, when you put them in your oven, watch them, check them after 5 minutes, check them every couple minutes, and I even, look y'all, I even put some everything bagel seasoning on some of them. Now what you want to do is you want to let these cool off and once they get cooled off and set a while they're going to get crispier. Um, you can see how these puffs up a little bit. Uh, these are probably out of the middle of my dough. These are more at the end. So make sure you get them you know, as thin as you, as you think you want them. But there is your, your soda crackers. So let's let these cool off a little bit. So our finished product and they're darker than what I wanted them, so don't cook them that dark. <laughs> but uh, they turned out good, though. So, your old-fashioned soda crackers. Um, please make sure, make sure, make sure that you use unsalted butter because your crackers will be too salty if you don't. Um, if you have to use salted butter, make sure you don't put salt on the outside. So... It's crunchy. I don't know if you can hear it breaking, but this one's dark. I think it was on the outer edge, but uh, tastes like cracker. Now, what I want to to really make you understand when you're making crackers, make sure. I keep looking over here. Make sure. That you roll them out so thin, your dough out so thin that you can see through it. That's when you're going to get your crispiest crackers. So do that, please. My favorite, I know, I've got a video way back in some of my first videos where I made unleavened bread. And uh, I think it was back, I think it was, it was way back before even uh, COVID hit and I made uh, a batch of unleavened bread and uh, that's some probably the crispiest cracker that you can uh, make yourself it does a really good job being crisp make sure like I said you roll these out so thin that you can see through them but you can make your own crackers at home we don't have to be dependent on the stores other people other companies to feed us. We can do this ourselves. I know I go to the grocery store sometimes and I, I just walk by there and I see the empty shelves of crackers and, and biscuits and I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. And I don't worry about it. I can come home, make my own biscuits, my own crackers, my own bread. I mean, it's just what we've always done. So 
if you've got flour and you've got salt, uh, maybe a little baking soda, you can have crackers. You can even have crackers without baking soda because pretty much crackers is more or less uh, pizza, uh, pizza crust is more or less pie crust. I mean, there's not much difference in there if you really think about it. You can leave the baking soda out and uh, I'm trying to think my recipe, I don't, it wasn't made with milk. I'm pretty sure it was made with water uh, back when they made unleavened bread. So, as long as you got flour, salt, water, you can make you, and a little bit of lard, oil. I'm pretty sure my unleavened bread was made with the oil. I had to go back and look. That's awful. It's, that's how long it's been. I had to go back and look. So, yes, you can have crackers, so don't worry about it. We don't have to depend on the store for this stuff. So when they try to scare us with all that, it don't scare me because uh, I know I can go home and make this stuff, and so can you. So always know that. As long as you got flour, salt, water, you're going to have some kind of a cracker, uh, fry bread or something on your table. Just always remember that. So thanks for stopping by. And... uh no worries on the crackers. <laughs> we still have cheese and crackers. It's no big deal. But I'm glad y'all stopped by. I know it's uh, get up every morning. And I feel so blessed that uh, I'm here. I've got another day. The good Lord give me another day. Uh, my children, my grandchildren are, are all good. Y'all are all good. If you're suffering with any kind of illness, cancer, or you've lost a loved one, we pray for you so much. And... Uh, just want to help you get through all that. Um, it's rough times right now. That's for sure. We all need to stick together. We can get through this. But just always know, do not ever panic. You can feed your family. Just keep that pantry full of your, your main staples. And uh, you'll be able to feed them. Don't panic. So, with that being said, we love y'all. You can see it's a beautiful day out behind me. Yesterday it snowed and got, but it's really cold out there though today. Really cold. I, it, the wind's blowing. I just can't hardly stand to be out there. But Mr. Brown's out there working in his new shop, putting stuff in there, and he's he's just like a little boy with a new toy. He just loves it, and uh, he wants to do a video showing y'all his new shop. So that'll be coming around soon as we can get out there. And it's so so cold, and it's not raining or snowing. <laughs> But anyways, y'all have a, a, the rest of a, the weekend. Just have a good weekend. God loves you. We love you. Pray the power of prayer. Pray for all the people that are suffering, that have been killed, all the innocent people, the children, the, the elderly. We pray for them. And uh, it's whatever God's will will be. And... Uh, just keep praying. We love y'all. We'll be back in a couple of days. Don't know what we'll be doing, but we'll be doing something. So we'll see y'all. Bye-bye.